Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. And welcome to the Bellows Falls Village Trustee Regular Meeting. It's Tuesday, October 12th, 2021, and 6 o'clock. We are down here in the Town Hall Lower Theater. Thank you for those who can attend by Zoom, and we'll see it on FACT TV. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And we need to approve the minutes of Tuesday, September 28, 2021. Did you folks get a chance to look at the minutes? I'll move approval. I'll move approval. Need a second? Okay, discussion. Looks like you had something. I, well, just a typo on the very under manager's report. Sure. It says okay. letter instead of luster. Leader. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I see. Minor deal, but oh, should letter. have an S in there. It's, or it's a le he's a leader, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything further? What's up? Me. All right, anyone else? Hearing nothing, those, um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we are set. Are we caught up? Are we caught up? some minutes we missed? I can't remember. I have to go back. The to only the thing that meeting. was missing, we did a, set, a special set of minutes for the joint uh, the meeting at the, it was a select board meeting at the, um, at the, at the Rockingham Meeting House in August. So those were posted. Oh, okay, those are yours. But I was thinking that we had... So right. skip a set of minutes because we didn't have. I don't think we're caught. We're caught up. I think on the village side. So okay. good. Yeah. Thank you. Although technically, according to the state, we are we don't need to actually approve them. We just slip them over. It's just I, a technicality. I really don't. Minutes are minutes. I, well, I like authorized. I like them authorized by a board. To me, they're unapproved minutes until a board reviews it and accepts it. So. Well. I hear the state, but I don't agree. Yeah. Well, Attorney so. Masuko has had that discussion with the, with this board a couple of few years ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting? Additions for Okay. Hearing nothing else. Moving on to public comment items. Anyone in the public? Nothing. Manager's report. goes but so, doesn't work down i know yeah so just a couple of things first of all on the water um, I'm, uh, we had talked a couple meetings about this colored water and some of the complaints that i'm sure some of you had been receiving we did work with the state um, some of it resolved itself just by normal turnover but we're also doing a, a slight uh, reagent uh, injection that helps control some of the manganese which is which is part of what is creating this discoloration so that also seemed to help so between just turnover and also this uh new reagent that was approved uh by the state i think you've seen at least i've seen at my place um a substantial improvement in the water quality and that's and clear now discoloration seems to have disappeared so hopefully if you're getting a complaint now it's just because we're doing flushing which is again part of a routine schedule sometimes you do see people get discoloration when we're doing flushing so you might see a complaint or a concern about that but right now um, there's nothing with the uh the water itself so just an update for people that had been questioning or concerned um the other thing was and i'm sure other members of the board might want to chime in but the park dedication for the uh around fuller memorial park was done last sunday a uh, tremendous amount of, of local work went into the park from its planning to its fundraising to ultimately its construction and dedication on Sunday. And it's a uh, great look, uh, great addition to our downtown. If you haven't had a chance to stop by, I would recommend that you go and walk through and observe and appreciate all the efforts from your friends and neighbors who made that happen. It's really a local effort and it really reflects well on our community. So for all those that worked on it, a heartfelt thank you and i think it's going to be a great addition to our downtown yeah it looks great all set okay 
Did anyone have any other comments about the park or anything like that at this point? I hear nothing. Okay, moving on to the agenda. Um, we will get to update the Westminster District Number Five Legal Review. I believe Masuko is Grace, here. Grace here. Yeah, I saw. I looked in the looked at the camera. And I could see him in the background. <laughs> um, he's going to need a microphone. Yeah, you can. They can use this one. That's excellent. Oh, either one. We'll give him a big gavel. If like I was going to say, yeah. what's the point of the gavel? <laughs> this is in a hearing. <laughs> I apologize. That's quite all right. I'm so tiny. You know? not very Stuck right in. Nobody yeah, not very noticeable. <laughs> I guess I'll go ahead and start. So, um, I'd ask Ray to come and just give a couple of sort of updates to the board. Obviously, we have um, not had a lot of official activity since this agreement was initially signed back in, what is it, 82, I think September it was. 82. September of 82. 40 years old. So it's aged a bit. Um, we have also haven't done a lot in terms of uh, updating our records since probably the last update that I can find where we went out and did either an accounting inventory or some kind of physical inventory is over 10 years old as well. So that's something that we'll have to do on our end. But I think one of the problems that we're running into now is we're having some payment uh, timeliness problems getting our money. And in fact, we have now gone through an entire billing cycle. We are still owed $8,000 from District 5 from the previous bill, and we just billed them an additional 20, almost $24,000. So with that as a little bit of a background, um, I'd ask Ray to come and maybe talk to you about a couple of parts of the agreement that might not be in, uh, in alignment with our practice since 82, and then maybe some other options or opinions as to how we can go forward and try to address some of the other concerns maybe that the board might have. And I'm glad to see that we're currently going through an ordinance review. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, and we're about done. We're getting ready to hand them to Scott so he can hand them to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, Forty years is long enough to go. Yeah. I was noticing this was actually uh, five months before before I took over as village council. So <laughs> predates even me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, that's all. Yes, I know. It's even I do. Now. Uh, I'll take it any way you want to give it. So, um, at the time we had this agreement, uh, there was still um, a North Westminster, um, Gageville, colloquially. And as you know, they merged with um, Westminster Town some years ago. So as a separate municipal entity, they do not exist. <clears throat> but Westminster had to pick up all the obligations of North Westminster. They come under the um, Chapter 8, our sewer use rules and regulations of the village, uh, under the terms of that agreement. <clears throat> and that we have periodically updated, um, not a lot, not often, because we haven't needed to. Uh, but because they do fall into that, um, we control the rates that they pay. Uh, I'm not entirely clear um, how the rates were established in terms of the estimated usage. Uh, we did it on uh, cubic feet way back then. Uh, one price for single family, another price for multifamily units. Um, and the multifamilies didn't distinguish between two units and 15 units, although I don't know if there's anything much bigger than two or three units in Gageville anyway. Um, the we have, uh, as you all know, um, we have upped our utility usage rates for water and sewer. And so that has been passed along to them, at least in theory. Um, we bill twice a year in arrears. So when you get your bill in September, it's for the previous six months in March, the same thing. And we spread it out over equal payments over a six month period, although users can pay it all at once if they choose. Um, they don't get a discount for paying it early. So most people, I think, tend to pay it by the month. For whatever reason, uh, the agreement with Gageville was that they would pay once a year on the first of the year. Um, and it doesn't even, I mean, it doesn't specify for the previous 12 months, but I don't know if there's any other way to interpret it. 
um, since they don't have meters, um, we're estimating what they have used. In looking at the billing, I see that we actually bill them when we bill village users or meter users every six months. Um, so we haven't been following the agreement in the sense that we're billing or that we're billing them so that they can pay on the first of the year. And we're doing it in yearly increments rather than six month increments. So the agreement would have to be modified um, by agreement in order to change that. It certainly makes sense to me, and again, I don't work in the finance office, but to be billing them on the same rotation or same cycle as we do everybody else. Um, and maybe back in 82, we hadn't gone to six month and arrears billings monthly. I'm not sure. Um, I, don't, I don't have those records. There's also a provision in the ordinance that if we find that the um, estimated usage, which we locked in 40 years ago, is no longer equitable, we have the ability to uh, look at that, including uh, in using the uh, a metering system for those people who are not tied in in the village. Um, and those are the ones we're doing by estimation. So there is that option. Um, I have no idea what the cost would be of that. We Our, our sewer charges are based on our water flows. Um, so we assume that water coming in goes out in some fashion. Um, where you have all these homes that are many of which are on, well, I don't, I don't know how many, uh, some of which um, I think now benefit from village water, um, but not all of them for sure. Um, so how you would implement a metering system, you'd have to talk to Rob. I'm not sure how the mechanics or the engineering of that would work. Uh, but as a minimum, um, those estimated usages from 1982 of 10,700 feet for a single family unit uh, up to, we capped out at a four family unit, 32,800 cubic feet. Um, certainly those should be reviewed by, Scott mentioned taking an audit or an inventory of the properties out there. I don't know if we still have 39 single family units and seven multifamilies or what the multifamily units consist of. Um, I would be surprised if there were not more multifamily units, just given the demographics and the way the village housing has gone over the last 40 years. But without a boots on the ground, walking around, looking at the grand list in Westminster, um, I don't know how you could know that. Um, we can, I, it doesn't appear to me that we impose late fees, penalties, and interest. Um, we certainly do on users in the village, um, and it's pretty substantial. Um, there is no reason why those cannot be imposed on the users in North Westminster. So we don't, have min we don't have minimums either on them. Although here in the village, you have a minimum. You have to pay the minimum. And according to the way this is done, and, and my interpretation of of looking at the at the 82 agreement was that one family unit 10,700 cubic feet now that's not per unit that's for they that number is being used for all 39 single family units which double that bill we have in front of us comes to 10,700 cubic feet with no minimums so not knowing what a house with how many people is using they're getting a great deal based upon the rate that we pay per cubic feet with a minimum, even if we don't, one person living in the house and they don't use it, they still pay the minimum. Mm -hmm. Yet we don't, we, our agreement doesn't cover that, mm -hmm. nor late fees like we already said. And there's no concerns of, month, of monthly, um, monthly payments. We're late, if we have late charges on a monthly payment. Yeah. Not, I thought, it I is thought, on. Uh, uh, Deb, I thought that. Uh, turn off, turn your mic on, it is on. If it's not working, it's on. So that's all I had to say about the, that. Um, I'm concerned that it, it's really um, unequal. So. Deb, the uh, the impression I got from Scott at our last meeting uh, was that <clears throat> somebody had, uh, I guess, <clears throat> the water department had said those numbers are still valid. Oh. Did you say that to us? Uh, you look at the engineering standards, so these are the standards that are applied in a 10 state area. So it's called the 10 state standards. And what they do is they look at utilization by a typical household. And they take that per, um, 
it's, it's, it's a standard. So it's not, it's not consistent like in the West versus, but in the East, that's fairly consistent. And, and they average for our area about 70 gallons per person per day. So when you take that on an annual basis, it's about 25,000 gallons per person roughly for a year. When you divide that into the cubic feet, it's about three people that's on an average household for a consumption per year to get that 10,700 cubic feet when you do the conversion. Okay. Yeah, one cubic foot's about <clears throat> seven and a half gallons. So it's not that far off. I right. think where there's concern is where you do have, you know, um, more people, obviously more bedrooms, you'll have more consumption, and places that are maybe more, uh, have been divided into three or four families that we're only currently building as a, a you know a two family kind of residence. Right. I think we agreed last time that if if we if the sewer department staff could do an audit of the users, I don't know who would do it, whether it would be the office staff or the or uh, uh, Rob's staff, but uh, it would seem as though uh, I, I'm more concerned with the audit of the numbers of units. Uh, if 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 they and it seems like they feel that the uh, <clears throat> these these standards that were set in '82 are still not that bad, right? right. So probably the way to do that because you really the physical audit is in a, you probably would have to go look at the lister cards on in, in Westminster Town Hall and see what's on file and see what's changed for the locations that we have in the our mapping isn't great so we still have to do some physical work out. To figure out, are we matching up addresses and locations? Because I'm still not clear that that's correct. Right. <clears throat> but then, when we have that at least secure, then go back and say, okay, now what's on the lister card? Has it been converted to a you know three family, or, or some of them have been converted to multifamily? And I don't think we we kept up, obviously, with with that. With yeah. That. Well, I think I think to the extent that we could begin to work on that, it would make sense. Yeah. A couple of other things, <clears throat> Ray. Wait, I just want to start for a second. I want to clear up that math question. Yeah. How many cubic feet does a family use annually? Again, if you're taking it, they take it per person, so it's roughly 70 gallons per person, per person. per day. So an average family. 2,500 a year? 25,000. 25,000 a year right. per family. Per person. Per person. Now multiply that by at least 39 single family units, and you're going to come up with a lot more than... 10,700 cubic feet. But not, when cubic one, feet. but not when one cubic foot is 7.5 gallons. Then you have to do that math. Then you have to do that math. Yeah. And it gets, it, it gets it bigger. It doesn't look right. Based upon the number mm. of people. I'm, I'm, and we're using the 10 state standard. Right. I'm assuming as the, as the right. average. That, right. And I couldn't go back. I tried to find it for the 1980s just to see if there was an old one, if it had changed over time. Right. The, the, the only one I could find is roughly 19, it's like 2004. Is the last iteration that I could see. Okay. Roughly, yeah. Uh, Ray, then the <clears throat> the <clears throat> in looking at the, the correspondence that they attached, <clears throat> it would appear that the person in uh, Westminster is taking the position that once they collect from the customers, the individuals, they'll send us the money. Okay, that's not the requirement. No, it's not. The requirement is for <coughs> Westminster to pay it. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, they, so I think, I think the, uh, I think we have to make it clear to the select board and the manager in, uh, in Westminster. And I think the the question, the other question I had for you was, um, if it says once a year, which it does say once a year, what would be the year? Where, what date would it be? December 31st? Would it be? Uh, it wasn't uh, real clear. Yeah, it's no, not it, clear, it, it, but, no, but I not. read it. Right. Um, I mean, it was signed in September, so I don't know what they considered a, a year based on that. I don't know. So I don't even know. Um, well, no, actually, it says the payment shall be due the first of each year. Mm -hmm. So. Right. I don't know if you're talking first about the first of each, of each calendar year. Yeah, that doesn't or say. The it's not clear. the first of each year of the contract. Okay. I mean, obviously, as of the date of the contract, um, I don't know when the sewer, when they were connected to the sewer line. Right. 
right, yeah. engagement. Um, so they didn't, they couldn't have had a history of actual usage as of that date, unless they did some kind of metering. So, and I didn't realize it was this 10 state standard, but, um, you know, I, again, it's on some kind of an annual basis. What the year is, whether it's a fiscal year, or a calendar year, should be agreed upon. But that, that has nothing to do with the users. We don't bill the users. No. They don't have a contract with us. Our contract's with Westminster. Right. Mm -hmm. That bill comes due once a year, and it's due upon when it's tendered. So the, the, I saw the notation about, well, we haven't collected it all yet. Yeah. That's not an issue. We're well, not there for enforcement of payment. Right. That's, that's the way they're interpreting it. I, okay. So obviously, we've got to straighten that out. Yeah. But I think that what I would ask you to, to provide for us is that, you know, if, for example, uh, they still owe 8000 from the March billing and the, no, and the October billing was 24000 mm -hmm. or something, then I think we should send them a note uh, saying that the 32000 and change, whatever the number is, is due January 1st, and if it, any delay beyond January 1st, the will accrue a penalty of whatever our yeah, standard penalties yeah. are. I think we've got we've to make that clear to them. I think the, uh, you know, to, to ask them to agree to a six months versus a year at this particular time when we're going to start imposing penalties, probably not the best strategy. Uh, but I think, um, I think it's clear that uh, we ought to make it clear to the town of Westminster that uh, this sum, the, the uh, October billing plus what's left from the March billing, that amount uh, is due in full January 1st. And if it's not paid, any balance not paid will be subject to the penalties. Can we do that? It doesn't say there's no language in there allowing us to set, to charge them additional fees. There's no language. In yes, there. it does. It, it is. It says yes, it's, it's, a, it's the same as, but it's not specifically yeah. saying if you don't pay on the first, guess what happens? We're going to slap you with a fee, well, and they're already behind from last year, so they should actually get a fee on the eight thousand dollars that's still behind, left. They're behind from the right. March billing, I think. So yes, they're la they're behind from the last billing, but they're only supposed to pay once a year, although for some years. The office well, has been whatever. asking them to I mean, pay I, more frequently. However, we assess penalties. Yeah, I mean that's uh, covered under the the sewer ordinance. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, the agreement just says they're subject to the same so rules, the so, same, same rules and regulations. Okay, but we give them the pass of a year as opposed, according to this, as opposed yeah. to paying every month or paying the six month right. billing. Yep. Um, in addition to that, I believe that we are way off on the on what we're actually charging for the flow because we're at, we're estimating it and I don't believe it's accurate based upon the number of people that you'll find in the homes in the 20 if there are still 29 single houses and then how many multi units with at least some two families they anticipate you would have that data we just averaged what our village rates are wouldn't we we can't know that can we well we meet our know exactly how many gallons come in we don't no no it's an estimate it's an estimate. We're using these numbers here because it's exactly, the billing is exactly the amount of 10700 for an so entire based on community. Typical utilization. What I'm saying is if we have right. you know, 42 units in the village of Bellas Falls, yeah. what is their rate and what are we charging for that? Just the same for North Westminster, right? I don't know. Just average, I, I see what you say as an, as an average, but is it appropriate? Again, otherwise, calling for an audit is allowable and, we sh and it should be done. More houses, less houses. We know there's at least, Sorry. you know, probably a couple of houses that are no longer, you know, occupied or gone or so on and so forth, but other homes may have been taken back over. Well, so. I think it gets to Ray's point about, uh, or the previous discussion about a minimum, and I think maybe Deb brought it up. But. Yes, I did. Everybody so there are probably them. homes where there might be one elderly person there. There might be homes where you have multiple families and generations in there. So you're going to have a huge difference in those two, those two types of occupancies, and they both might be single-family homes. Right. Oh, oh shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't their board of listers have that? 
Well, yeah, that's talking about the cards. Yes, the cards would give us information. Right. That, yes, it should. <clears throat> the, number of, the number of units, not the number of occupants. Not the number right. of occupants. Right. right. But we should, and that, what, what I'm saying is if we want to charge a minimum per household because they may be using less than that and we're giving them that based upon the estimate, we would need to redo the agreement, not just reevaluate the number of homes. In order to do this properly, we should do a new agreement. It's 40 years old. Right. We should have it. We should have them to the table, and we should um, ask to do amendments to this document. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, at least in theory, it's a pass through for Westminster. Um, clearly, they're not collecting what they should be. Um, and I don't know how they bill. I don't know if they bill monthly, six months, a year. I have no idea how they bill their own users, um, so they can pay us. Yeah. But the the ordinance itself provides that. For um, users who do not have metered wastewater shall pay an estimated rate to be determined by the trustees. And that's where this 10,700 feet came from originally. If the trustees find that the estimated rate is inequitable under the circumstances for a specific user, then a meter may be required to determine actual usage. Or the trustees may make such other adjustments or arrangements with the user as shall be appropriate under the circumstances. In our case, <laughs> Westminster is, in theory, the user. That's who we contract with. Um, but if there, as Scott just said, or Deb said, if there's one elderly woman, 80 years old, living with her cats all alone, you know, using them a couple gallons a day, mm -hmm. as opposed to the family of seven, yeah. using, washing more clothes, taking more showers, um, uh, that may be the case where it is, quote, inequitable and you could require a meter. Who's gonna pay for the meter? Who's gonna install a meter? That's the subject for discussion with Westminster. What if, what if they're on well water? You know, I mean, it's like, I, I don't know. I mean, it just, you, you can still, have to meter you can still the, measure the amount of flow from a well. Right. Yeah. Okay. It would pass through the meter. You just wouldn't be charging for the water. You'd be charging. For the that, to me, that the, the, that, to me the, the auditing of the numbers and all that kind of stuff is, is all a great idea as long as the manager and the staff have the time to do that, okay? What I'm saying is, let's just focus now on what we're owed and let them know that they're gonna be charged penalties and interest beginning January 1st of 2022 uh, on any unpaid balance. And, uh, and that, that we can do within the agreement, let's do it, uh, maybe that'll provoke a discussion about maybe we could uh, we could have a committee to to uh, look at revising the agreement, all those lovely things. But let's just do it now, so that Westminster understands that waiting for their uh, residents to pay the bill mm -hmm. isn't part of our deal. Our deal is with the town of Westminster, and let's get paid. I, I really I, you know, keep in mind that when the agreement was written, it wasn't with Westminster the entire time. It was, it was just this little tiny village right. of right. 40 or whatever number of houses it was, 45 houses. Mm -hmm. I suspect that they had a much stronger incentive to keep it current, collect the money, than the town as a whole with whatever, three or 4,000 residents who don't have the same interest um, in enforcing that agreement out in Gageville. I think we should have a motion to do this, but I do believe the motion should have a secondary part, which does allow that we go forward at some, at some point, say by the beginning of next year, with a, at getting an amendment done to this agreement, making a new agreement. Yeah, but I think... But, uh, no, I'm saying that should be included. Initially, that's the first part of the motion, but the yep. second part should include of doing a new agreement, because this, um, this agreement is but outdated. Don't, don't you agree that... that we need to do our homework as to how many users are there. Right, and that's part okay. of right. the second part of the, the motion is right. to get that Once moving. That's, but that's, that, that doesn't involve Westminster. No, that yes, involves yes and no. It involves staff or just requesting that information from staff, from Westminster. We can do that. You can start with an initial, you don't have to go dig into the books. You don't have to go look into the neighborhoods. You can get that information from them by asking them, someone needs someone in our offices do need to do that, to ask for the information. But on top of that, according to the agreement, they handle all the maintenance and services to there, so they should be able to tell us someone, they must have someone there that does that. According to that, 
someone services and maintains their lines that connect to us. So that's it's just a two part thing. We don't I don't want to let go of amending this agree this ancient agreement, which really does need upgrading um, and getting them to pay. Okay, I, I don't interpret it that way. I interpret that those lines are the property of the village of Bellows Falls. No, it says so it says they belong to them. Second page. Okay, well that all right, that it may says be similar N to the N W to the what's up on Kissel Hill then. Is that where but, it goes to? Wasn't there, I recollect, I thought there was an agreement, like if there was a break out there, our people went out, we were reimbursed. Probably. But it doesn't say so in the agreement. No, so that would be a side agreement, which isn't documented. documented. Right. Yeah, Rob could tell us. So All right, then I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, notify, uh, number one, that we notify Westminster that the amounts uh, charged uh, for sewer service uh, that is not paid by January 1st, 2022 will begin to accrue penalties and interest uh, just like all of our customers uh, are charged. And secondly, uh, and I make it clear that it's the town of Westminster that is liable. And secondly, to explore with the town of Westminster uh, uh, a uh, the possibility of a uh, review and re and, amendment. uh, and amendments or a review and, and a rewrite right. of this uh, 1982 agreement. All right, I'll second that for discussion. Okay, discussion. I okay. obviously have one. Aren't there a hydrant system out there that we get a hydrant service fee for? Mm -hmm. Fire service fee. Fire I'm service sorry. fee. Right, and when the the second time they were in here, not the last time, but the time before that, there was some residents that came in that had an issue. I think one of them, if out of my recollection, spoke up that they weren't using our water, but they were in proximity of a thousand feet or something of a hydrant and they were paying a fire service fee yep. and didn't think they ought to be paying it or weren't going to pay it, the way I recollect. Is that part of the sewer agreement? I don't think it is. No, I'm not I saying it's part of the water. It's part of the water deal. Yeah. But yes. I, I believe if they're not taking care of this aspect, I'm sure there may be. Well, um, Pam bills them for any um, hydrant service. I'm, yeah. just, I'm assuming those are right. separate bills. That's separate. They come we, from, we and do they the come billing from on that. We do the billing on that. Yeah. This is the sewer. So. We might have to not do the collecting on it. But, but it may be something on it. take a look at. Well, in the process of getting together with the Westminster people to, to look at that agreement and do an audit. We definitely need an audit. Okay, so any further discussion on the I motion? Have, yes. I have two questions. They're kind of along the same. Maybe Ray knows or the manager. Where does the sewer line end in Gageville? Do you know where that stop? I, I forget where it stopped, how far it goes. Rob is Before the bridge. Right? Yeah. Before the bridge. Yeah. By the way? Before the bridge. Yeah. The bridge. Right. Okay. It goes Before, across the bridge. Does it take in the new development they're doing? Across from Cooperman's? Across from Cooperman's up in there? Yeah. There's, does it, uh, is that connected? They, well, they're, they're not connected to anything at this point, I don't right. believe. Oh. Because okay. that was a development that objected to paying right. the fire protection. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but okay. There was also some, out of my memory, from having been here for a bit, there was some discussion when the select board was talking with um, Saxons River. There was some discussion about extending that line beyond that bridge into Saxons River. Right. And then there was some opposition in North Westminster. And it had something to do, uh, I think Ellen Howard was familiar with it. They were at the time, I believe it was an eight inch line or something like that. Whatever size the line is, they were allotted, if they were developed, say future development or housing out there which there was discussion at the time in a uh, location near the near the bridge but in the village of north westminster um it kind of dictated the size of the line that would run to saxon's river from that bridge and beyond because they needed a certain size line in north westminster for to be allotted a certain amount of per gallons if they were to build say 12 houses or six houses or something 
But anyway, that's part of this right. review. My yeah. second question, just okay. to just so I know, is um, is Kissel Hill in the high school part of this? No, no, they have a separate. They're separate, right? They, they have, have a different agreement. They have yeah, a different, yeah. and they're called a different district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I wanted to clarify. If that I may, again, I don't want to prolong this, but from a historical yeah. standpoint, um, in fact, Scott Falzo was here at the time. Um, there was a discussion from two individuals on Kissel Hill who were going to, um, so, so to speak, sign that line over to us, Bellas Falls Village Corporation, and give us, I think it was an amount of $40,000. And at the time, out of my recollection, the board said no. And one of the reasons for that was because there was some repairs needed there and they were going to exceed the sum of money that they were going to give us in exchange for taking over the line. So we didn't take it over because we didn't want to be responsible for the maintenance or incurring future cost of uh, upkeep and upgrade, et cetera. So. Yeah, they have their own, <clears throat> Kissel Hill has their own um, Coalition committee thing. that manages that. Right. Uh, they had a they had a breakup there a couple of years ago yeah. that that single break cost around twenty five thirty thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Uh, and they did not have at that time. They, my understanding is they did not have sufficient reserves for that. Yeah. See, I recollect at the time it was a forty thousand dollar figure. I may be inaccurate out of memory, but the reason no, the board did not take it at that time was because the estimated repairs that were said to need that were needed were going to exceed that. That's a different district. Okay. Yes. Right. Yep. It's a different okay. district. Yeah. I mean, that, right. that development is now more than 60 years old. Uh -huh. Right. All right. Um, no more. No further questions. All those in favor of the motion, as stated, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Now you have direction. Thank you very much, Ray, Thank for you. the. Well, my pleasure. Good to see everybody, oh. and congratulations on a fabulous event. Um, on Sunday um, for the new Memorial Park. That was just, nice. as I told many people, that's one of the reasons I'll never leave Bellas Falls. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, yes. All right, moving on, we go to the review, um, to review rental housing ordinance. We have two people from the ordinance committee here, Hope Brissett and Remy Walker. Um, you can, you can have, I don't know. Just do I have microphones now? Where, where's the one for the? Okay, yeah, right here. there. But there's only room for one person. <laughs> Just come up here. We can put two in here. Yeah. Grab, so grab one of those extra chairs. Chair. Yeah. Come on. Of course, the trustees have already seen this once before. It has been, it has gone through many other hands since then, and additional review, attorney review, organizations have had input, amendments have been done, and now we are at the this point. Okay, so take it away, Remy and oh. <laughs> whoever. Go ahead. Um, well, the biggest change from this version to the last version you, you saw would be the um, checklist, which really holds all rental housing mm -hmm. to the same standard now. So when an inspector visits a property, they know exactly what they're looking for. And that helps landlords to know exactly what they need to be looking for in their rental properties. Um, so there's a really clear standard now as far as what's expected. Does anybody have any questions? Did you read it? Cause I did. I like, good, thanks. It's a lot of work, I want to say. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. 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 We've been over this so many times, too. The, the, uh, to refresh my mind, the, uh, the, the procedure for, for doing the inspections, how, 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 how will those be arranged? Oh, over a period of is it like a four-year oh, period right. yes um the and the you've got zones yes the whole okay. village i believe is spread into four or five different zones yeah. um and each zone gets um i think it's four zones each zone gets expended on a four-year basis so there's only one zone being inspected per year so per that year. way um, <clears throat> um you know then they're not overwhelmed with inspections and who is going to do the inspection i believe the health officer yeah and Ch chuck and Sean. chuck wise yeah Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Great. Any more questions from anyone? Haven't seen all the material. Um, Do you I want to move? Well, just for clarification, I think I did clarify it once I read the full document. But complaint-driven inspections are paid for by the complainant. Is that correct? Yeah. So, if a landlord 
has a complaint, they pay the $150, have the place inspected. The tenant has a complaint, pays. I believe that's, um, I don't have my big book of answers with me. So I guess the... I don't remember everything. I believe if the tenant has a complaint against the building, the landlord would pay if the complaint was based upon the validity of the complaint. Based okay. upon the validity, yeah, exactly. Landlord based. Yeah. And if not, is that fee waived for the... Oh, we didn't talk about that. Waived I don't for know. the tenant, but not the landlord. I, would, if the, I, would I believe build. in the in there, there are fees for the tenant if they have cre created a... Unfounded. Um, yeah, an unfounded oh, okay. request or, or, or violent, or unfounded violation. Just violations. to be a pain in the you know letter. No frivolity. I don't think it's 100% clear. Yeah, I don't think it is. I don't okay. think it's written that clear. <clears throat> so much to so. Is someone? I don't, I don't think know. so. I thought it hurts. It could just be my ear. Okay. You know what I mean. Hearing voices. Um, remember that this process, um, this is for us. It's come back to us now. So uh, my intent is for us not to look at it again until November. Um, and then, so if you have questions and stuff, you can forward them. We can get them together. If there are uh, changes that need to be made, it'll go back to the trustee, to the uh, <clears throat> ordinance committee. Um, it'll go, then it'll have to go to, it, once you pass it, which means after it goes back to them, it comes back to the table. Once it's passed, um, we have to give it um, public hearing, at least one, maybe two. I don't know, Scott might know that. And then it's another 60 days once that go, happens, at, if everything's good, before it actually goes into effect. So some months will still go by. Well, I think you have to do the public information and we a public do. hearing, yeah. and yep. then it has to age. So it's going to take some time. Right, so it'll still be some months out. I would, I would like to say it's not changes that you want made. It's changes that you think have an idea because we've gone over this so many times and had different there's been so many incarnations yeah how does this sound i don't know and then no you know a month later we take it out so we've probably already thought of your ideas so if you have more questions this definitely questions are good address. so we're not voting on it not tonight i tonight. want you yeah. to have the month to review it come up with additional questions or concerns talk to your neighbors about it you know, man on the street, kind of things like that, see what kind of feedback you're getting. Um, and then, then it will come to us, we'll come back, we'll bring it back in the November meeting. I figured the first member um, November meeting and to see if we're ready to vote on it, to move forward to yeah. the hearing process. This is really important. So I want everybody to really look at it. It's taken a long time for us to get through this. And we kind of like y'all to, we're still waiting on the final guidance from the state. Right. They've been slow walking their <laughs> final approvals to this. They've been giving us sort of a verbal and occasional nod, but nothing in writing or nothing official. So we've been prodding them and still don't have final clarity as to right. the state. So we're taking our time. We'll give, so for instance, it's going to go into November, and then right. here, public hearing will probably get done in November into December. And then we're so we're giving a plenty we're of lucky. time. <laughs> if we're lucky, if we're lucky, to move this, move this along, and hopefully get an answer from them. Yes, so from the state. So. I just wanted to say that I've, over the past year, read every draft. I think, so I do recognize <laughs> that you. a lot of work has gone into it. So thank you to your team. Um, and I think it has evolved, and concerns have been addressed. Um, in a reasonable manner, so thank you. I think you're welcome. This is a great thing for everybody. I, Moving forward and back, trying to I, improve I, housing and it's the wonderful. Of it. Well, I think, and it's long overdue, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the important thing is, is you know, this is a start because it's mm -hmm. you know it's labeled as rental housing. Mm -hmm. The brochure starts with that everyone deserves safe housing. Exactly. And I think we need to recognize that there are a lot of single family houses that are unsafe that need to be um, looked at in a similar manner as well because it benefits everyone um, in a number of ways beyond health and safety. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Yes, go ahead. So my question is, uh, I've read this several times as well, but this checklist, I'm curious why under the kitchen, section why it points out a smoke detector in the kitchen 
what happens typically is, you don't have smoke detectors right, inside usually, of a kitchen they're usually near um outside of the bedrooms outside of bedrooms or in other yeah. areas of the apartment unit but You're not like a legal list aren't you or just a checklist just the checklist the checklist chuck did the checklist Un yeah. under the kitchen it says there's three set there's three places in here where it mentions um smoke detectors mm -hmm. which is good one section where it mentions smoke and co which is good but then under the kitchen it says smoke detector per nfpa 101 and it cites we and i to... typically i mean out malls i'm saying is that unless the codes change because that very well you know i'm not aware that the requirement for smoke detectors actually in the in the kitchen, kitchen it might be are required for, or a good thing right. um larger unit buildings because i know the code changes drastically for apartment buildings and things like that so that code might be specific to um larger units because you know it changes a lot then so that that might be referencing that that's why you see it in the kitchen but i'd, I'd have to reference well, to i don't have the nfpa books yeah, right. so right. I'd have to check that. You, having yeah. one in the kitchen is not a good idea i know yeah. and that, there's no you never be making another steak <laughs> I, I can vouch. Yeah. yeah, my husband <laughs> made smoke this evening yeah. in the oven. Or even I mean, it's good toaster. to have one just outside the kitchen, but yeah. typically you don't see them right in the kitchen. Right, right. they're just outside of. I think we got twelve in my house, and they, you just, know, up the stairway adjacent to oh, the yeah. kitchen in the hall, going away from the kitchen yes. is one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not in the kitchen, yeah. and in the fire department. Fire chief from we can bring this Westminster. Did the That's yeah. a good that would be a good highlighter. Change. If we had That's to do that. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Russ looks good. Cool. Anything from good. anyone else? Who's got? I'm happy about you guys okay. reading it. It'll be back in November. Um, then you can, and, and any time along the way, you can send questions, and I'll be sending them to the rest of the ordinance committee too. So everybody can look. And I'll, I'll send them back take up to that you. one to Chuck immediately. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you. Okay, thank oh, you. good. Thank hey, John. you. John. Excellent. Yes. Now don't go away. The rest of the meeting is still, yeah, still, yeah. still going, going on. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our next agenda item <laughs> is to review the executive Thanks. session procedure. Good. I'm starved. Um, this, was, yeah, this is put on oh, for management. This one. Yeah, I've got one right here. The older green one. Do you have that tattooed by now? Yeah, no, all, of it, all of it. Yeah, but you know, it's yeah. only like actually asked quite a while ago for a, a copy because I hadn't had one for a while. Yeah, I have a paper copy in my bag. But she so didn't I'll, get I'll leave these extra ones down here so that when we do this again, you don't lose track. Yeah, we'll make sure. I know that at times it's confusing as to what requires one motion and right. what requires two. Right. Yeah. That's really the distinction. That that's. <clears throat> to be 100% in compliance, and I know that we're trying, you know, all of us are trying our best to be in compliance with all the appropriate Vermont statutes, and, and this one is very particular about reasons for executive sessions, and then once we do establish the reason, the, the process of the motions and the actual uh, format of the motions are important uh, as we go forward, so... I wanted to just give out extra copies. Nothing has changed. It's just simply the last few times we've done our motions, we didn't do the second motion in, in terms of the actual language as opposed to um, we were right on our, our reason. We just didn't find, we just didn't do the second motion on the appropriate uh, And that's only for seven through 12. Correct. So. So yes. the seven to twelve gets the two two motions. Two, yes. no, two motions. Exactly. Okay. And I know that it's awkward, and I know that it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things Scott and I talked about was if we know we're going to have an executive session, that we put the reason right here on the agenda. I think we will try to do that to make it simpler. And you can always change it, but at least that's a starting point. Yeah. For... I think the big kerfuffle came up at the joint board meeting um, when we had to go in executive session. There, that got confusing. Yes. Um, we need to be cl as clear as we possibly can about doing these because these are only exceptions and if we don't do them right we could have a problem so as has been noted that's what this sheet in your packet was about right um, what 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 are the repercussions if we violate the law and there's a lot of case law around this as you can well imagine it's fairly well established so it's one of those procedural nuance items that we'll have to pay closer attention to and I will um, if, if we do know ahead of time, I'll make every effort to try to give you 
the guidance from the, you know, which of the numbered items is a reason and then whether or not it needs one or two motions, which should help then. All we have to do is grab the cheat sheet and the rest of it should be fairly simple. So. Any questions for anyone on these items? You want these back? Nope, we're going to leave them here. Leave them here and then. are going to leave them right here? Yeah. Yep, yes. leave them on oh, the table. the select board has them too, yeah. Right, so that way we got more than one in case one disappears. I was right. always nervous that the one would disappear. Um, item number four is discuss sludge dryer options. And you have some paperwork in your packet. Right, so I'm not asking you tonight to make any decisions. I wanted to give a couple updates and then get some feedback from you as to other information you might need prior to making a decision. Um, Jigs had called me earlier and asked about just on the RMI contract, the pilot study contract, Mm -hmm. when we had actually started making payments. So I did a little bit of research before the meeting and it was kind of quick. So we actually signed the agreement with them in October, end of October, uh, October 28th of 2020. By the time the install was done, it was not done until the end of November. So we actually started making payments beginning of December. So December. Right. So. And, and we've been paying how much a month? 10500 Yep. Ten five. So we've we've been going eleven months. So we're at uh, one hundred and what fifteen thousand we've paid so mm -hmm. far. One hundred and fifteen thousand. Right. The reason I raised that is the um, you can you can see we've the current extension goes until the end of this month. Correct. Right. And the proposal is to go. Another six months. Oh, that's no, eight months. Another eight months. Right. And the uh, uh, my, I mean, there's more to hear from Scott on that. But my feeling is that if we were to continue with this, uh, I think we should have discussions with RMI about the monthly amount. Mm -hmm. It just seems to me that um, the, uh, at this clip, this is a this is an expensive. Uh, item mm -hmm. for us and you know granted our septage revenue has been good but you never know if, if that slows down right um, but uh, anyway well I appreciate the, the right. information so. so a couple of factors since we last spoke um, one of the issues that and, and uh, Jigs was relaying on we had had a previous conversation about the relationship between Cinchi USA which is the basically the American offshoot of the actual Chinese company that manufactures these machines, and RMI, which had had a marketing and sort of a licensing agreement with Shinsi USA. Well, that agreement is no longer in place. My understanding in talking with Shinsi USA today and in talking with RMI a week ago was they had had a falling out. They are not gonna continue a relationship so Shinshi USA is going forward as their own uh, fully integrated. Uh, they're going to sell the units, service the units, uh, do the installs. And the difficulty, and Rob and I spent an hour and a half on the phone with the Shinshi USA people today that I have with that is, there are only two members right now of Shinshi USA. They're located in Arizona. They claim they have a warehouse in Yuma, Arizona, which I have not seen and have no way to verify if it in fact exists. And if it does exist, is there actually inventory in this warehouse? They do have, I believe, um, they are doing additional installs. In fact, one of the people you spoke with today was in Wisconsin because they're doing an install in Wisconsin. So the machines are being, um, they are being used and, and bought and, and installed in other places. But I have a tremendous concern that we'd have no support east of the Mississippi River if we decide, which again, with this pricing, um, there's sort of a, a deadline on acceptance of the pricing by the end of this month. Um, then there's going to be some additional pricing changes. So we had a long conversation with Cinchi USA to, uh, today um, Rob and I asked them to make sure that this June 24th proposal was all inclusive because if I'm going to you with a recommendation for any kind of purchase, I want to make sure that there's no additional costs or other surprises that are going to be uh, related to that. 
So they told me that they would review this and get back to us and make sure that it is in fact uh, the full uh, proposal for the purchase of the existing machine. Um, we also have a decision to make by the end of the month as we had talked about with the Casella proposals. Um, Casella had offered us emergency backup pricing, which I think we would do um, as, as just a uh, safeguard no matter what we chose plus the option to do this new service, which would be the hauling to the uh, recycling facility that we talked about in New York State, which has a different price. Um, and then comparing those costs, and this would be a three-year contract based on our current hauling tonnage, so you would have some certainty in terms of your cost. Um, so that decision has to be made by the end of the, end of the uh, year as well. And then the machine that we currently have is actually owned outright by RMI. It's not owned by Cinchi. So then the question becomes the third potential option, if you'd like me to pursue it, would be to potentially have a purchase arrangement on that machine specifically with some options then to have a relationship with RMI as we decide to go forward with some sort of uh, performance bond or other type of uh, security or support so that if we did have a problem we had some ability to collect and not be left holding the bag um, i think no matter what option i propose to you i'm going to pro propose some sort of performance bond so that we have some potential for recovery and if there is some sort of fill you know falling out with either since usa they're no longer available from china for whatever reason and you know that could be a host of different reasons or you know, we, we can't get uh, RMI or some other um, engineering company to help us with the operation and making sure that we maintain our biosolid, uh, Class A biosolid rating. Now, to complicate that discussion, we had talked the last time about the state of Vermont. They still have not certified our, our biosolid in Vermont for Class A. The last communication that I received is they wanted some additional testing of the material as it was on the belt in the dryer. It had to maintain a certain temperature over a period of time. And they were having a difficult time trying to do that because every time they open the door, the temperature inside the dryer changes. Yeah. And so they can't get a consistent temperature to be able to show them that this is the temperature. So we're, we're having kind of a chicken and egg argument with, with, the, state of Vermont. with the state of Vermont. So it's, right now it's only, it's only We still are only in permitted New in New Hampshire. Um, I've asked again, you know, as soon as we did get some indication, I said, I'm not, I'm not comfortable if we don't have at least both states as an option for Class A. I don't think I would recommend to you to purchase or to continue unless we had at least a two-state availability. So that's also sort of um, a time-sensitive uh, track as well as we're talking about making decisions. So that's a little bit of the background. Um, the Cinchi USA RMI relationship is a is a fairly new change. Um, was not terribly encouraged with the conversation I had today with the Cinchi USA people. Um, don't have any plans at this point for any um, other relationships with in, you know, even another RMI type firm in the East Coast somewhere where I'd feel a little more comfortable that we could at least have somebody within. You know, if I have a failure on a Tuesday morning, I want somebody here the next day at, at the latest because I can't afford to have that thing sit for a week and, and not be able to process right. material. So, and you say you weren't encouraged, you weren't encouraged by Shinsey or by Shinsey, but you don't have the reservation about RMI necessarily. Well, since they don't have a formal relationship with Shinsey, I'm concerned long term because if they change the technology or there's other, yep. you know issues were sort of stuck yeah, parts yeah. And things like that so you know we're looking at a 20-year uh obviously we want to have a 20-year relationship with this right. machine so we wanted stainless steel in order to prevent right. replacement of having to the sheets like, and everything right quick question i just would be um seeing the uh new environment or circumstances mm. where would the support come Come from if, uh, if we went forward purchasing machine it would come from Cinchi USA which is basically one guy in Yuma Arizona and another guy who runs around the country doing installs right 
and no other relationship of any type that I'm aware of with any other boots on the ground type of person that could come and assist us if we had some kind of catastrophic failure. That's including RMI or? They would have no relationship with RMI at that point. So, so what's RMI going to do then? Gonna... Will RMI have a relationship with another Cinchi? I don't know. Yeah. It's unclear. There are other, there, there is at least one other company that's making a dryer. Uh, I don't believe it does this class A biosolid right. fertilizer. Right. And so, RMI has other businesses that they, that they already do yeah. right. beyond this. And I think they only have one other installation, don't they? Somewhere in New Hampshire. Hooks it. I thought it was in New York. Hooks it. Hooks it. Oh, is it, oh hooks, hooks it. it. They also have one in New York. Okay, so they have, they have a couple. Right. Um, are they Cincy units? The one in Hooks that I believe is. That they are, yeah. The one in New York, I'm not 100% sure yeah. what that one is, Jigs. I, I don't. So we could still get support, but buying this machine give, doesn't give us the options that we wanted to make sure we had longer-term use of the of the machine before we had to do replacements. Um, right. So the, I don't think that they can give us the stainless steel unless they get it from Chinsey. So that it would, it would, it would appear that the, uh, the options that you're mulling are the purchase of the new uh, stainless steel unit from Shin 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 I know Shin Shin. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't say it either. For like four hundred thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Uh, entering a three-year contract with Casella on the pricing that they've provided. The previous pricing that we re that we reviewed, right? Right. Um, and the um, now that you you said that no matter what we did, uh, even if we went with a chintzy unit or stick stuck with the RMI for a while, they we would continue to pay this monthly rental, right? We would have some sort of emer the emergency backup cost would be would be we so would that'd definitely be six, do that. like six thousand dollars a year or right. something like that, right? Or they agreed they'd sell us a container, which is about ten grand. And then we would we would own it, and then they would just transport it under that contract for those contract prices. So that's another option for okay. the backup. And then the third the third option would be to to uh, extend the current rental arrangement with RMI, hoping that the unit you know doesn't have any problems. Right. Um, and uh, so okay. So those are those are the those are the three things that you're right now. mulling over, and, yes. I, and what what I would what what I would suggest to you is that that the RMI, particularly given the the change in their relationship with Gensi, uh, uh, you know, extending the the contract, uh, you know, ex especially for like an eight month period, I right. would like to see a lower monthly rent rental rate. i'll talk to sheila i i think that's probably something we would definitely want to put on the table because yeah. again we'll, we're going to compare it to casella really is the, uh, and in particular if they want like us to buy the unit now that we realize they their relationship right. is broken with their basically their pipeline right um to these units and all of all replacement parts so those are those are concerns that are going to make it difficult i hate I would hate to lose the process with all the work we've done so exactly. far. Exactly. Oh, I know. Making a better, uh, right. better environmental footprint and have to lose it because we can go right back to the old way. Right back yes. to where you started. Even though we may lose those options because the dumping places may close at some point too. Yeah. Well, the grasslands, which is the other option that we had talked about, right, the upstate New York, is a reuse option, but it mm -hmm. does require hauling. So yeah. it's not as environmentally, obviously, beneficial yeah put it that way so the purpose right. of the extension is to allow for a further evaluation of the dryer or to i would the, think it'd be the further vermont. evaluation of the dryer make a final purchase decision if is if in fact we can try to either arrange some sort of relationship between cinchi and rmi or some other entity for maintenance and long-term operation because i'm not real comfortable right now with that with just cinchi and two people out in arizona right, right doesn't feel like that's a, a I wouldn't recommend that to the board it's too much risk so another option yeah. is to abandon it and we could review it in three years the other option is you could abandon it they take it away and because um, they own it and by that yep. point there may be 
and, pricing and it could be a whole equipment. new market in three years. Different, yeah, yeah. different, yeah. different right. manufacturers. And we would know our cost because we would have a locked exactly. in pricing. That's so, encourage. Yeah. anyway, so there are options on the table. Yeah. I'm not happy with well, we'll have to make some, some of the recent the developments, long, but you, would would Sensi uh, on a purchase would they would they finance it for us? I didn't ask them that, but I can. Would you? Yeah, I'm waiting to have him revise this uh, June 24th to make sure that we don't have any surprises in that proposal. Yeah. So, but I will, I, I will add, ask him. I'd that. add that as a question. Okay. And and we when do we need to make this decision? The next meeting in two weeks? I'm going to have a, in front of you for a decision in the, by the end of the month because okay. we have to have this proposal expires in October. Our relationship with RMI, if we don't sign the extension, Ex expires. expires. And our Casella pricing won't hold. Of course. He wants a decision. So he agreed to hold it until we make a decision by okay, the end of October. Okay, so we would have to do all that at the end of the month. Okay. So we're really sort of up against it. There's not much more. And um, is there any okay. historical data on if we were to continue with the machine as far as maintenance costs, that sort of, what could we expect? What's predicted, yeah. It's a, such a new technology. I don't think it has a five or ten year history. So we're going only by. So our savings could be diminished. Yep. If well, the belts we, were out or if other, be. right, if what other Talking to pieces, Hostet or New York. Yeah. Have you done that? I have not spoken to them directly. Okay. I was wondering. We might get some data from them. Yeah, that's what I was just right. going to say. Yeah. But I don't think there's been an install older than two or three years. Probably not. Okay. But they've had so, more experience than we. So there's, right. it's a little, it might be not a lot more, but it could be some more. And also, and how much time we need before we can still get Vermont certification on, on the SOT. Well, on if we can't get Vermont thing. certification, I'm not recommending this machine no matter what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, can't, I can't go by, you know, the regulators have to make that decision. Exactly. Whatever happened to those thermometers that you have a probe and you put the probe in there, and it reads the temperature without inside. having to open the door without having to open the door can't you i mean it, i would think there's something like a meat thermometer is what <laughs> I, I mean the material is thin yeah. but there has to be yeah. some way to measure that direct i, right. I would agree you know you, so. you figure that yeah as soon as you open the door the temperature changes so there's just no I mean, yeah. same thing in your own oven you never got to know that's what your meat thermometer is for well that's exactly yeah. right <laughs> so i don't know what the big, this is not exactly the big meat, deal but is yeah. But, yeah. it seems like that's got everybody you know all wound up yeah so <laughs> Anyway, course, so that's where we are, but I wanted to at least give you those updates because there have been you. some changes here recently. We all set yep. on this subject? Yep. Okay, we'll be seeing it in two weeks. All right, now, um, item number five is the Violet Bridge, the 2023-2032. Um, of course, every two years they revise their 10-year plan. Right. Um, this is that period. They had a meeting last week at, in Keene. Um, they have some people from Walpole did attend. I didn't get to go. I can't remember when I was doing another meeting, I guess. Um, but um, Scott's going to talk to us about it. I want to let everybody know an address you can send letters to until November 8th. So we'll do that for the tail end. So we have done as a board uh, a, pre a prior resolution requesting um, funding for the non-covered portions of this project. Um, I think both the town and the village both adopted separate resolutions. I would suggest that maybe we want to just update those and put those in the record so that they're officially in the record as we go forward. Um, I'd also suggest that maybe we uh, we take the same copy of that and, and send it to all of our federal officials. If there is going to be some sort of federal either infrastructure program or direct uh, community benefit types of programs, like we talked the old... Uh, uh, you know, the federal direct money. I think we just need to keep our senators and our Congress people involved so they understand what we're asking for. But based on this current schedule, you can see that there is some money as early as 2023 from New Hampshire into engineering work. That's the good news. The not so great news is it's only funded at roughly 50%. So the non-participating other is unknown um, and you can see that that's a portion of all of the phases of, of this project. So the right-of-way phase, the preliminary engineering phase, then the construction phase, which they would propose starting in 2028, all has a fairly substantial unfunded balance. We started this whole thing, it was only $6 million in 2009. Uh, 
the, the cost of neglect I know. is steep. It's true. And uh, I think those are pretty accurate numbers. I think we had yeah. talked the last time Almost that we thought it might as be. Much as it was. If they'd so, only taken care of it sooner. You can see now we're up to se over 17 million as a replacement yeah. or a rehabilitation, rather. Will you have a resolution for us next meeting? I'd like to update your previous resolution, and I'll put it in your packet. We still have time to get it in for the November. Yeah, for November 8th or whatever. And um, we will certainly share that. Like I said, we'll have the, I think the uh, town is going to do the same. As many as possible, And we'll yeah. try to circulate it as much as we can, but just want to get the board and just the public's understanding of where this, where this stands. So what's the, uh, oh, at the top of the letter, it says pending approval. Oh yeah, because it has to go through this public approval process. So they have to have they have the three mandated public meetings. Then they go through a, a another publication process, and then it's adopted. And then Every once it's adopted, years. it can be amended. And we've seen it amended to where this project is dropped. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we'd like not to right. see that. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, for those who who cannot, um, who couldn't get to any of the public meetings that you'll hear about in the newspapers and such, we have until November eighth to send our written comments to William E. Watson, PE, Bureau of Planning and Community Assistance, New Hampshire Department of Transportation, John O. Morton Building, 7 Hazen Drive, that's H-A-Z-E-N, P.O. Box 483, Concord, New Hampshire, 033020483. Just wanted to give as many people as have the opportunity. People are starting to send letters now. Um, I sent one today, too. Um, and getting them to hopefully catching the right person's attention um, at some point you know, there are people who say this is just dead stop talking about it and and i continue to say every year people revolve through these jobs and there are always there'll always be an opportunity for someone with an ear who was very who will take up the charge in new hampshire and help us get this taken care of well, that's the point anyone else have anything else on this subject okay we'll see the resolution next meeting um, next, item number six is discussion of school zone safety ordinance. I asked this to be on here. We don't have such a thing, and the schools don't have one either. However, there is a federal ordinance about guns, and there's a, uh, with a thousand feet away from in the school, in near schools, there's also an ordinance, um, a federal ordinance, I believe, about drugs or the state ordinance. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, however, the reason for bringing this up had to do with a flag, with a profanity in the president's name that was flown right near church place where all the kids go by in the school bus. Um, the police politely asked that they remove it. It was removed for now. And my concern is, is there anything we can do? Does this board wish to do anything? Um, are there any concerns? I understand there are lots of freedom of speech concerns. I do understand that. Um, but I'm also concerned about what we expose our children to on a regular basis. And, and within the school zone, we have, you can't put um, um, let's see, adult entertainment nearby. You can't do certain things. We've had uproars about certain people being moved into church place before. The past years has been um, complaints about that. Um, people that are placed there, and those things have gone on and on. So I wanted to know if this board has any desire to do anything or consider doing anything. It would go to the ordinance committee, and they would have some months to work on it. But I just wanted to see what the feeling of the board was. I would. I would. I would think that this should be a joint board discussion because the, uh, it would seem to me it, would, it should be a town ordinance, not a village ordinance. Okay. Uh, the, uh, you know, Saxons River School is, is in Rockingham, it's in the town of Rockingham, mm -hmm. village of Saxons River. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the Rockingham School Board, they, their, resp their responsibility extends to all three schools, the uh, middle school, central, and exactly. Saxons River. So I, th I think it's a good idea. Um, the, uh, uh, as you said, there are, there are a couple of things like, uh, uh, you know, guns, I think. Guns and drugs. And yeah. drugs mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, in some kind of an ordinance or, or policy or, or law. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think... Uh, uh, and I think this is something that maybe the school board, uh, uh, you know, would, uh, might be interested in. Get behind in. or something? Yeah. I have spoken to the superintendent and asked him if they had anything, and he wasn't aware of anything that was not already 
um, policy on school property. Uh, he was going to look and see if they had anything, um, but um, I don't believe he'll find it at this point. But yeah. he, is, he is aware of what I was interested in. <clears throat> am I, um, correct, the, am I correct that there's a clause in one of the zoning uh, provisions that there's not to be profanity on signs or? Um, there is one in the per, um, of offenses against persons and property, which is one of the ones that the uh, ordinance committee is working on or has worked on. Village um, ordinances, the village ordinances, yeah. yes, village ordinances. And the concern about it was when I brought it up is that is the concern about freedom of speech. The Supreme Court has done a lot of additional ex expansion of freedom of speech law. And so the concern is what you can say and what you cannot say whether it's not just verbal, but written material. And that was a concern. Scott might have some more information on that one. Well, I think that's part of it. The other, the other part of it is, it's, since it's on a, it's not in a commercial uh, building or it's not on a place where you might even have a home, built, a home office or that type of uh, advertising, it's just somebody's protected speech. Mm -hmm. And there's, we can regulate signs in the right of way we can regulate certain activities on public spaces but when you get into people's private property it gets the um the law has been pretty clear about what you can or can't do yeah. and it mm -hmm. gets to become a slippery slope in terms of enforcement and the definitions of what is obscene and, yeah. and it gets quite uh, difficult and there there's something to political signs too correct yes right Mm -hmm. um, three things come to mind. One, I was just advised recently when somebody I shared this agenda with this afternoon from New Hampshire, but we all see them bumper stickers. If you don't like the way I drive, call 1-800. Right. There was a case in Florida <laughs> yeah. where the gentleman was arrested because he had that bumper sticker. Oh. He later sued because it's free speech. Right. Um, then I believe the other, maybe Wade's familiar with it, the town up north where Gentleman evidently took his carving tool, chainsaw, whatever, and mm -hmm. big indexing. So while well, this was, a friend of mine was reading this, she says, oh, by the way, if you come through Route 10 in Lemster, now there's a huge gold index finger with an FBR or whatever, uh, FJR or whatever, so on private property. But yeah. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. Yeah, and my concern is not just in the neighborhood, because you can go buy someone's house, you know. As an adult, no big deal. But right. on ch on uh, right. just at the corner where Church oh, yeah. Place turns, there's no way for the buses to go anywhere else. It's one way street. Yeah. That is seen by all of our school children. Is there a possibility of something? It's worth a discussion. Yep. It's worth a discussion with the select board. It's worth a discussion with the school boards um, to see if they think there's any value to it, if there is any way to do it. I understand the slippery slope issue. I'm specifically con targeting the children in our district. And, um, and that would be at any school, whether it's Saxons River or right here. So that's, uh, that's it. And, well, that, you know, you know, good. I'm not sure who owns that specific address, but if that was a rental property, most rental properties, I know when I had mine, were considered oh, yeah. commercial. Uh -huh. I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is. I don't no. believe it was. I think it's an owner, own, owned. So family. two things. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the police department asked the owner to remove it and they did and they did okay well that i appreciate that because sure. i did see it and a I actually request yes got a complaint that day um yeah i i would support pursuing at least finding out if there's anything that we could do to right if put not, a little if teeth into it down cannot, the road we cannot but if we but if there is a, i mean public discussion isn't going to hurt anything for right. people to understand and if nothing else it just gets it makes people see what we need to be concerned about if yeah, that if makes sense that makes it, sense if it doesn't it doesn't somehow yeah if it's if it's, if if it's possible doable. right um i don't need anything anything further on this Are you guys okay at this point we'll bring yeah. it select board makes sense we'll go to the next joint board with the item and right. see where we'll it goes do a little bit there. of research before then so yep. we have some and i'll have to... more discussion with the school um superintendent yeah. and the boards before that so thank you very much Next item on the agenda is the Vermont State Use of Force Policy Update. So I just wanted to, I, um, it is in effect, it went in effect October 1, mm -hmm. and it's a, it was done by basically executive order, so the governor did it. So we don't have to adopt formally as a select or a trustee board or a select board or any other 
level of government. It's done as part of our our executive uh, level. But we did talk about this in July. Yeah. So we had a just a brief yeah. conversation. Since then, our supervisors and and our um, officers have had training so that they had the initial training on the policy and now they have started training um, just the rank and file so there has been some initial implementation training um, the there's an additional requirement on this for i think it's 14 hours of additional of there was some additional training which has not taken place um, but in terms of awareness and just general um, implementation our, our force is aware and has at least been given the initial uh, guidance as to how to enforce this. So it is now the in place. In place. And I and because it says he continues to say draft. <laughs> I know. Draft coffee. I it's just, the final draft. And, yeah. and it hasn't been. They have not put it on as officially approved. Yeah. So this is yeah. still the same one. Well, I spent a lot of time online last week because it was town fair. Didn't see any of you guys. Didn't see any of the select board. I saw you, yes. Yeah. Yes, wait, I did see you. Um, Every day. I did, I did. I did, I swear, I did. But um, there are new board members here and the new board members on the select board who I would have thought should take advantage of it, especially when it's an online forum. And it, once you're signed up, they give you additional classes that are that are already logged, so they're recorded. You can go see them anytime at that point. Mm -hmm. But this was one of the pieces. They spent one whole day basically on policing um, one whole day on equity. I mean, just, you know, all through the week. I didn't ever get, didn't get enough points to win a prize, but, but I, because I didn't play the game. They have a game thing they do. It's, it just shows participation. And I was like, I didn't even know how to put it in. But I figured it out. It's too late. But, um, but I spent most of my week um, doing that. And there were a lot of great modules in there. And there's a lot of great information, updates and things like mm -hmm. that. So this is just one of them. All right. Um, I'm impressed. I'm <laughs> yeah, impressed. right. I, I hey, cool. learning, learning is an ongoing thing. Yep. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. um, number seven is the Vermont State. Oh, we, I'm sorry, cover that. Number eight, discussion of DEI training. That's another piece. Um, I am currently on the um, Diversity, Equity, and Conclusion Committee of VLCT. If you could pass just as this information. And they I a, would. They had a whole day on that. They so. had a whole day on that, and I spent a lot of time there too. So, um, and and in particular because I didn't want them to think I wasn't showing up for my own committee's meetings. So, um, but uh, because of that, and that a lot of the, what we're doing is by the end of the year, beginning of hopefully by the beginning of 2022, there will be a recommendation from my committee on trainings how to perform, how to do regular trainings that VLCD will find their way to adopt at some point. I would like our board, uh, our municipality, to sign on to do the trainings, every department, including our board. I mean, I think this town should do the same, but I've put together a little small list of reasons, good reasons to do it. One of them is risk management, which is a great reason for us insurance-wise to do the trainings, and because I think it'll give us a broader perspective um, make everyone feel, give everyone the opportunity to feel equitable in their job, that they're all included and that they are all being allowed the same advantages as every other employee in our in our village. Um, and I think it's important to do it. When I was working in Seattle, I had to do it through the tr bus company I worked for, and um, they did it every few years. It's a great way to just open up, you open your mind up. People get agitated by the number of people they see all the time, and everybody has some feeling about something which um, come, falls under these trainings. And I think it's important that we consider moving forward. This would be moving through the months whenever they start offering the trainings. Um, and I would like to see us move to, um, to say, yes, we'll do these when they are offered. And you're, ta you're talking about for the board and- The board and the departments. Departments and staff and whatnot? Yes, that would include all the employees and staff. Yep. Yep. And at some point, I would think that the town, if we do this, and the town would say the same. They aren't ready yet. We're, we're, we have not gotten any modules together at this point. We're just basically, we've learned about each other, and now we're, and we're getting additional trainings from other um, experts and that sort of thing, so we can put together a good use training module, at so least one. What's the training module? 
proposal look like? We're talking a weekend. We're talking an evening. We're talking um, what? We are. We are talking about. We haven't even done that at this point. I would expect that will, initial trainings will be done um, with an in-house view and then with recordings in order to roll them back out as needed to those who couldn't make it for the training um, or and on a regular, like say, annual basis or every two years. We haven't figured that out yet either. So, it, but it's coming. I mean, I've been in doing this for the last several months. Um, we're getting close to putting some pieces together. So. I would just like us to see, I'd just like to see our community become more diverse, more equitable and more inclusive in our government and the way it works that way as it spreads out through the community as well. Um, Vermont itself is attempting to become more diverse. We need to get with the times. So, um, thoughts? Well, the, 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 the thing about equity that that concerns me is that, uh, um, uh, and it, it probably couldn't apply to any of it, is that, um, you know, we're all created equal or whatever that's supposed to mean, uh, but uh, we have a range of abilities. And I think when you're in the workplace, uh, there's workplace expectations, both, both in terms of, of, of how you act uh, but also how you perform at your job. And I mm -hmm. think that the, the uh, I would hope that, that in the, the enthusiasm to educate people about equity, inclusion, and uh, diversity, that we're not confusing, uh, that just because you're, we're equal, uh, you can slough off and not do your job. I mean, it's it really, really and truly, you know, it shouldn't become a seminar on how to sue your employer. Uh, you know, I, and I don't mean to be dis, disrespectful or anything else, but I think that the, um, that I think that there is, uh, there is a balance. And, uh, you know, I view occasionally uh, some of our towns around the state and the issues issues they bring up mm -hmm. and and, it's, and to me it's bizarre and and it's probably cloaked in dei but uh, anyway i just uh, i just wanted to throw that out there and uh uh certainly i i i want uh i want all of our employees to be safe and and treated properly mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so, what brought you know, this to the training? For me training was... is is important. I think it's got to mm -hmm. be done uh, very well, and it, and it can't be done in these extensive, you know, week long seminars and stuff like this. It has to be, you know, short. Boop, Everyone boop, has a know. job to do. That's right. Yeah. I don't. That is not the not the intention. In, and on the committee, I'll make sure to remind if that's necessary. That we can't we can't do that. Everyone has a job to perform. These need these are just an enhancement to what we already do. And based upon the the near litigation that we just completed with one particular department, it should be evident that it is necessary for at least one department. If you do that, you need parity. So all departments would need to receive the training. Right. So no, it, that's yeah, a very on good example. Side of the of table. Of right. Thank you. Why you? I wanted to be sure. I didn't include you. I didn't. I turned my head this way, not this way. Yeah, please be equitable. Yes, sir. Turn to us. <laughs> well, at one point, we did have where an individual did come in, and we had some training on uh, whether it be uh, harassment at work, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this evidently is a new element. Whether politically motivated, that's up to debate, but um, we are an equal opportunity. Mm -hmm. So is the is the board interested in this when it comes around, hmm. when the modules are completed and they're available to the public? Yeah, I think. Yes, I said part of available. It, it's, I think it yeah. is. when we get there. Right? Yeah. And again, it's understanding. This is not. This is it, our intention is not to take a whole day away from employees performing. Right. Their no, no. I think I short messages to the point are good. Okay. So I think we're, that we've covered the sub tub, tub, the yeah. subject, and when we have modules ready, I'll let people know that. We're getting ready because they'll have to go through VLCT and they have to do their approval process before 
they well, actually become released. I think in years past we had a speaker come from the VLCT and address some of the subjects. Yes, yeah, so maybe that is an option again. That's that exactly. Okay, thank you. I didn't. Re I don't think I was ever on the board when that happened. No, that was, no. I was just going to say it goes some time back ago. quite a ways. Yeah. All right, then I think we're done with that, and we can move on to number. Steph Stefan needs an update on. Does he? Yeah, he I wants so. an update. Okay. I think it's been a long time. <laughs> well, we get one where I work, so we're good. Yeah. Uh, a resolution. Furthering is, is nice. <laughs> okay, we'll be ready. Ready. Number nine is the resolution for public sewer system bond sale of nine hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. There's some paperwork in here for that. So this goes back to the initial. Uh, action of this board in 2016 yeah. and now we've come full circle the work has been done um, we this was not just a bond but there was also a grant involved with this as well so I think we spent four hundred and some uh, four forty thousand dollars in grant money and an additional 988 in bonding this will I think also eliminate one of the larger uh, financial issues that has been discussed here at this board for an extensive period of time and the do to to from um, trying to understand where we were not um, lining up with our uh, numbers and so when these bonds are sold and we receive that revenue I think it will eliminate a large portion of that concern in our uh, sewer fund which I think is we've talked about many times at this table. So what I need from you tonight is just to approve the resolution, sign the, uh, the, the attached uh, page for the uh, adoption, and, and then basically the actual sale and all the other aspects are handled by the bond attorney. So we've, we've done the- You have the, two documents to sign, Scott, is that correct? Yeah, we've done two documents. The second one being then just the, um, it's just basically a second um, so there's one that says number one and it lists the 988 and then the other one is for the resolution itself mm -hmm. okay. so and both of them are related back to that original uh, 2016 uh, action right. by the previous hmm. board uh, Scott the um, on the bottom of the first page of the resolution it talks about uh, a user charge sufficient to pay the same as the same shall become due. Mm -hmm. um, is that, I mean, I know this is a, uh, uh, we, we've got, we're looking at uh, semi-annual uh, principal and interest payments, et cetera, but is yes. there going to be additional costs associated with that sentence or that? No. No. Okay. And these bonds aren't callable, so my understanding is is that basically we are, once you approve this, we will be doing 60 payments of $21,457, um, which is, you know, the 1.75 interest rate um, on April and then again in October of each year through 2051. So if any of us are still around in 2051, maybe we can celebrate <laughs> <laughs> and burn the... Burn the document. Burn the yeah, document. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, not, we're lost to history. What what can we say? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, 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 pass the resolution and certificate regarding the uh, nine hundred and eighty-eight thousand uh, dollar sewer bond. A second. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Okay, well, I would ask, do you want us to sign this, these copies? Is that That'd good? You have, okay, you don't, yes. you're fine with that. So if I start on one of these. Yep, all right. you start one of them, that's all I need. Okay, having the motion in mind, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Now, so. do we need another vote for this other, the, the bond that, itself? I think you said by resolution and, and certificate. Certificate, yeah. the certificate right. is the second. Yeah. Right. second so item. we should be good. So good. Yes. I will sign and pass these around. Um, while you're doing that, just a couple of updates yep. on the financials because I know Deb had asked me some questions and I just wanted to answer for the full board. Um, the, one of the questions that she asked me was about the police cruiser. Originally we had sold it and then the buyer had backed off. It is now back up for online auction. I believe that auction closes at the end of October. Okay. So I will report to you in November. Hopefully this time we'll have a buyer that will execute and we'll be able to then report to you on the disposition of the cruiser.
we have one additional transaction which is water and sewer fund balances and it goes back to uh, the work that was done on the Burt and Blake Street improvements and as part of that there was a portion of that improvement that was supposed to be charged to the town highway fund and that was approximately two hundred and seventy nine thousand dollars when it was all said and done that was not in fact charged to the highway fund it was charged 50 percent to the water fund and 50 percent to the sewer fund so we are making the appropriate adjusting entries and charging the highway fund wow. of the town the appropriate amount so 130,000 135,000 you should see yeah. in both funds both as funds. A additional wow. and that i believe will be the last of the large oh my goodness moments that we yep. have run into yeah. i think the rest of our concerns are relatively small potatoes compared to these two things the big one was this 988 yeah and then that one was another one as we went back through resolutions and trying to figure out where uh, things didn't line up. Thank you. So hmm. anyway, so and it's not reflected, by the way, the reason I'm jumping into all of that, it was not reflected when I did this, In this printing printing on the 7th of October. So it will be reflected in your next updated uh, budget status reports. When you're done, Wade, just pass that to Scott. Thank you. All right, that moves us on to, thank you, gentlemen, and moves us on to the financials. The last item, and um, I know you always have questions. I want to make sure these guys, do <clears throat> you have finance questions? No. Okay. Jigs. <laughs> well, I, I'm, going, I'm, I'm going to do the short, <clears throat> short version. The, <clears throat> the, um, the issue of overtime mm -hmm. uh, is a concern for me at the uh, police department and to a somewhat lesser extent uh, to the sewer department. Okay. Um, the, when you look at the uh, salary account for the police department, recognizing that we're, we're understaffed by two officers, uh, and you look at that salary account, I think we're, you know, a, we're a third of the way through the year if everything was on budget, we'd be at, that account would be at 25 percent um, of the budget. Uh, and um, it, where is it here? Uh, page seven. Page maybe? six of nine. Isn't that with the police department? Page seven, is? I believe. Page seven. Oh, is it seven? Okay. <clears throat> okay, here it is. Yeah. Six, maybe. Yeah. We are at 25.06. Correct. Okay. Okay. That's with two officers missing. Okay, so we are with the combination of of uh, overtime and uh, part time. I'm glad to see we're, we we are getting that the chief is getting some part time increase in part time uh, uh, services. Um, we're right on budget. And it would seem to me that we've done things like uh, reduce some coverage that would seem to me to, to indicate that we would be under that 25% as of the first three months. But uh, so anyway, I would just put a cautionary note out on the overtime in, mm -hmm. the, in the police department. As I said, it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit of an issue in the, right. uh, in the sewer fund as well. And, uh, and we'll get some recapture through the FEMA process mm -hmm. as we go forward and, and file for those reimbursements. So right. that will, I think, not obviously eliminate your concern, but I think it will help to maybe modify some of that impact. The, uh, uh, the, other, the other general comment is the, you know, on the, uh, and, and part of this could be timing differences, <clears throat> but the, uh, if you look at the sewer fund, for example, and you look at the amount of debt service that we paid off in the first quarter, <coughs> uh, the um, I think we had uh, our annual debt service number is seven hundred and fifty thousand. We've spent just under five hundred thousand in the first quarter. Okay. Mm. 
um, or 65 percent of the of mm -hmm. the budget. Um, the <clears throat> that's probably why our due from or due to has gone up to a million four. Um, but you'll also notice that that Walpole, who generally represents 20 to 22, 23 uh, percent of our uh, of the of the cost uh, mm -hmm. is at 14 percent of their annual budget versus we're at 65 total so uh, so the I, I you know again hopefully that's just timing differences that yeah i bill... just approved a quarterly billing for walpole today so that, again okay. that's not reflected in the 10 <clears throat> right of course and it'll be reflected in the next one which i think will bring us up to pretty much on track with how you know our, our normal number Right, and then the, the other the other thing too on the on the water and sewer is one of the things is in the finance committee we've only had a couple of meetings uh, and we're we're really dealing with with financials rather than you know other other items, uh, but the uh, you know you look at the uh, uh, Northwest Minister uh, revenue item on the water department and the uh, and on the the sewer department, the uh, sewer fees. Uh, we have a budget uh, for in the water of twenty four thousand. We have forty five thousand budgeted in the sewer. There's there's no accrual of of uh, of income, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe I believe that uh, <coughs> those those revenue items uh, are. Uh, Accrued. If you look at the, if you look at this sewer charge mm -hmm. of four hundred thousand, I'm assuming that's the initial billing, uh, the full amount of the billing. Yeah. Uh, but it's, so it's been fully accrued. So you know you would expect that that there'd be something like twenty eight thousand or twenty two thousand of revenue showing in in the sewer fund and twelve thousand in the uh, Water fund, but um, but anyway, those are those are the main issues that I that I had with the financials, and I got a, I, of course I have my usual set of nitpick uh, items. <laughs> the other, I guess, the other one I'd say is that <clears throat> if you look at the <clears throat> if you look at the outside contract services in our finance department, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, which we all understand, you mm -hmm. know, we're using. Uh, it's going to run over. Nimric, yeah. Uh, we're right using over. Nimric. Yeah. Uh, you'll see in the in the general fund. Um, why do I always have trouble? Okay, yeah. Um, we show uh, the last line. This is on top of page three. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Of eight, we show uh, forty-five hundred dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't see any number uh, like that in the water and sewer fund. Um, I haven't allocated any money, and I will. Okay. Yes. So, so that's a, that's a, that's right. an allocation. It'll be an allocation. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. The other parts of the finance is is being allocated. But, mm -hmm. Yes. So that one. But that one's not. That okay. one I haven't done yet. So that one hasn't been. Right. All right. So you're right. It's not. It's all in one spot at the moment. I'll make a That's note. all I have. That's all you yep. have. Yep. Um, Wade, did you have anything? No, actually, uh, you answered one of my questions already, so I'm good. Great. Okay. Looks like good. we're good. Okay. It looks like we're good on finances. Thank you, uh, you and uh, Cynthia for all and the uh, rest of the people in the department for all the hard work on this stuff. So. It's been a little bit of a puzzle, but I, I'm confident going forward. I think we'll all be in a better spot. I think the board can feel more comfortable on when I report where we are and feel better about making decisions based on that. So it's been a little bit. Oh, of this a, progress. Yeah, it's I'd progress. It's been yeah. slow, but it's progress. Yep. And I do appreciate it. they've been great to work with. Nimerick has been tremendous, and <coughs> Cynthia has been wonderful. So. It's been good. It's been a difficult road. <laughs> <laughs> and you've done great with it, so. 
um, review agenda items for the next meeting, October 26th. And we already have a few that we've listed that will yes. be included. The only thing that I didn't put on that I will have for you next time is a request to join the uh, National Opioids, oh, God, I can't say this word either, National <laughs> Opioid Settlement. <laughs> Opioid Settlement. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, what Deb said. <laughs> what Deb did said, yeah. Yeah, that's, so that'll be added to our agenda. Yes. Okay. Is that also going to be a, a town item as too as well? Yes. Yes. And it's a... Yeah, it's a long process. You know, if you've followed any of that litigation, right. there'll be a yeah. special master and a fund and there'll be an allocation and who knows what we'll see when, yeah. but it's worth participating. Um, okay, did anyone else have anything they wanted to put on the October 26th? You can always send it to me or to Scott as we put it together from two weeks. Agenda items for the joint board meeting are about six weeks out or so. And there will definitely be some items we just talked about um, that'll be on the agenda. The principal too. one we wanted to make sure and why I put it on for November, and you can certainly move it if you'd like, is I wanted to finalize our tax sale mm -hmm. a, a lists. Right. So they needed some work. There was some confusion. I want to clean them up. Have and we a, haven't made a motion to move forward, so we need right, to do that. So. Which would then hopefully be at that meeting so we could start that process. Okay. Did we have any orders, bills, and warrants? No, I went upstairs to double check, so she didn't have anything for tonight. Okay. We signed so, a bunch of them at the joint. We did. Yeah. We yeah, did. So we took care of that out. then. So it's mostly cleaned up to just last week's at this point. Yeah. I don't think she put anything together. It wasn't enough. No. We'll probably see something maybe at the end of the month. Maybe yes, the you will. Yep. Um, yeah, that's where I saw a lot of the uh, USDA payments. Yes. <laughs> last week. Other business. Scott. Um, no, I don't think anything else at the moment. Wade. Uh, just two quick things. Uh, I'm happy to report that there's been, between myself and Betsy Thurston and her volunteers at the EFDDA, I believe there's been approximately seven fire hydrants refinished in the last week nice. or two, mm. last good. 10 days. So those, that's slowly moving forward with their help and whatnot. I don't know exactly. I want to say it's approximately 180, roughly, Ooh, plus or minus. Of, I believe it's close. It's, it's yeah. right. It's, it's right around 175, 180 total everywhere. But anyway, so that, that the paint. I'll do the one in front of my. Are you serious? Oh yeah. All right, I'll get it for you. Yeah. We, I got it Tell for the. to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I will. I'm sure I can get people on my screen. And, um, That'd be great. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to contact you know me, and I can point you in the right direction and yeah. get you going. But uh, so that That's project's kind of broke ground, and then you know if it takes a while, so be it. But at least it started. And the other thing I just want to mention was I noticed that the uh, town is I saw some streets that were swept recently, and they look good. I'm trying. Yeah, they look the ones that have been done look noticeably better unfortunately yeah, every that's... time you sweep the leaves fall down. yeah i know but <laughs> yeah least, exactly yeah for about 15 20 minutes it looks really good yeah, yeah. i mean <laughs> no my kitchen floor. but they did i mean rockingham street the other day looked like picture perfect yeah but no they are out there working i appreciate i that. watched them come up Thanks. school street they got to just before my house had hadley street and they did a u-turn <laughs> oh yeah went down the other side <laughs> So her plan. But anyway, that was, yeah, yeah. That was deliberate. It was yeah. a deliberate act. <laughs> anything else? Nope. Okay. Jake, do you have anything? Uh, just any, uh, any more uh, uh, with regards to guidelines on the uh, uh, COVID relief funds uh, usage or whatever? Uh, we are still with preliminary Treasury Department and other interim rules. And they haven't given us any indication as to when they're going to make us uh, give us final rules. So I think what we'll do is we'll start to work on some preliminary, just working with the board. So I want to do this prior to the budget. So I don't want to I don't want to bleed it over into the actual budget process. So if we don't get something by November, I'm going to start working through with you guys in December, so we can start thinking about priorities, how you want to go through public discussion, and other types of. You know, we can test it to make sure that we're doing it by the interim guidelines because they're not moving very quickly. So I'm guessing we might not have uh, final 
adopted by the time we want to make decisions. So anyway, that's the plan. Okay. Unless you want me to accelerate it, we can certainly do that. No, I, 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 you know, I just. Uh, I know. Yeah. It's, it's not moving quickly <laughs> on the federal side. They've given it out, but they haven't given us all the direction on how to use it, so. Right. No. Um, <clears throat> for myself, uh, two items. Uh, number one, so the board is aware, I meant to do it yeah, a Sunday, but I didn't. Mm. I have, um, let's see, 92 and change. So $93 left over from our last barbecue, right? Um, I am going to put it into the fireman's GoFundMe account for the park. And so that money will be donated there since they provided food and that sort of thing. So it'll be clean and um, there'll be a transaction. So I get rid of that, just letting, letting everybody know. I meant to do it on Sunday, so I'd have a piece of paper and say, look, I did it. Um, uh, secondly, my company is um, sponsoring fount the Fountainhead next week. And I have tickets. If anyone is interested, mm -hmm. free tickets because we get for sponsoring the movie. And, um, and that does that it. Just that. Yeah. Well, finally get an opportunity to check out the Fireman's Memorial. It looks really good. Hopefully, uh, through the years, it will stay that way. Yeah. It's very good, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maintenance will be the issue now, so. Yeah. yeah. That's all. I'll just yes. echo the uh, efforts of a lot of community folks in uh, planning and executing the, uh, the park. I was at the event on Sunday. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. There were people from near and far, and I was eight years old when that fire took place, and um, there were people I hadn't seen in 20 years who uh, were there. So it was a, certainly a moving event and one worthy of uh, this community. So thank you to everybody that was involved. Yeah, the, the presentation itself was very well done. Yes, it was. I, I mean, yeah. uh, all, all due respects to the audio. Yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike but no. uh, some, <laughs> of the, some people you could hear fine, yeah. and I others you know. couldn't. I just I have no uh, idea it was why. weird. It was how close they had this to them. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. yeah depending yeah. on the microphone, you have to get it into your face. So, yeah. um, All right. Thank you. Thank you. And so, therefore, we um, need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. And seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you and good night, everyone.